Hello, I'm Evie Cuervo. Welcome to DeGiro Tech Talks. Connectivity is everything, but when you're around large crowds or in congested areas, it can degrade network connections and cause less than desirable results. Imagine watching the finals of your favorite game or even watching an important world event unfold. Spotty TV signal can cause a lot of issues and make a lot of people angry. To chat more about how to eliminate video transmission issues, I am joined by Jeremy Miller, DeGiro's Global Director of Technical Account Management. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Jeremy, the reality is connections are going to become congested if there is something important going on. So how do you deal with that? Well, as a company, we've taken a stance that RF is our priority. And really what it boils down to, very similar to your home experience with a Wi-Fi, right? So if you have less bars or less signal, you're not gonna get as much performance on there as you're moving through your house. Mm -hmm. So think of it very similar when it comes to cellular networks. So we build our boxes with the RF as the priority. With that, we also add in smart blending technology on the software side to allow us to mitigate over the network side of it as well. So we try to prioritize RF performance along with our smart blending technology on the software side. Smart blending technology is, you know, the bread and butter of, of DeGiro, really important, but there are things that you can use uh, that can help to even improve those signals. What are some of those important tips that you can share with us? Well, a great example of this is what we did at NAB. So at NAB, you have large crowds and they're all at, you know, a couple meters or feet above the ground level. So you wanna get your signal above that as much as you can to help get direct signal to a tower or the local receive site. So try to get above the crowd if you can and then also set yourself up for success. So you can do testing prior to, and while the event's going on, we also have the ability to watch our signal real time and make adjustments with the smart blending technology and being able to do that along with our content adaptive encoding to be able to maximize the best performance in those scenarios. The great thing about this is that you're going to have a bottleneck regardless of what you try to do in those environments. You can have a RF, uh, congestion where there's a lot of people trying to get on a tower or signal issues there. Then you can also have the issue once you hit the tower and, you, and it turns into IP encoding once things start moving. So we try to mitigate both of those by having superior RF performance mm -hmm. on our devices, in this case the Ango, and then we also have smart blending technology to be able to adapt on the mm -hmm. software side to adjust for the network issues. So bringing both together really sort of creates a powerful solution. Correct, it's you know the beauty of having good hardware along with software. And that's the ability, and one of the great things that we do here at DeGiro is that we have the ability to adapt to both and do both very well. There's something called a recording feature on um, DeGiro's mobile transmitters. What is that all about? So we have the ability to record clips and then transfer those clips from the transmitter side to the receiver side. So the receiver side usually sits, uh, you know, in a data center at a TV station, or it could be, you know, for drone footage or anything like that. It could be also at a data center for a first responder or public safety customer. So the great thing that we do on that is it mitigates having to deal with networks real time. So when you record a clip, and then you go to transfer that clip, you're just transferring it as a file. So you can record it locally on the hard drive, so you have it there as a backup, also while you're going live, so you have the ability to do both. Then you have the ability to transfer that file as a clip, and it lands on one of our receivers. It can also land on our cloud receiver, which is in the cloud. And then you just simply press play on the output and control, and next thing you know, you're watching that video live, or live from that box at the station. Well, the nature of your job allows you to go to all of these very um, interesting places around the world, helping organizations, you know, put something to air uh, or help with some type of production value. So tell me about the coolest, you know, project you worked on where, you know, congestion was a, was a real issue. Well, there's so many events, you know, I've been to, whether they're political conventions in the United States or sporting events, Super Bowls and those types of things. The great thing that I've seen is the ability for us to be able to adapt for those and to be and to be able to adjust what we do for those. And sometimes we set up Wi-Fi, our own private Wi-Fi for events to help out where we know that there's going to be, you know, especially outside of an infrastructure. Most stadiums and whatnot usually are built to be able to handle the density of the people that are there. In this case though, if you're remote, if there's protests, those types of things and you're they're planned and that, that kind of stuff, we can help set up and mitigate that. 
I would say inaugurations are always fun in the United States. Uh, I'm a little biased there, but also I, I really like going to sporting events. I was just in Italy to help out one of our resale partners there to help set up outside of a, a football arena over there and was able to actually help them out. And they also were able to get solid signal remotely right outside of a stadium, which is very different than being inside the stadium. So how is it different from the outside than the inside? The big difference is the technology that's used. So they've learned and done a lot of testing. And a great example of this is some of the other providers and what they've been able to do with high density connectivity inside arenas. So they're building stuff in seats, they're building stuff all over the place to allow a great experience in the stadiums. They're not so much concerned outside the stadium. So when you're inside the stadium, people want to be, you know, streaming, they want to be posting videos, they, you know, obviously the involvement of social media comes into play. So there's a lot of people that want to be able to do that kind of stuff. So they've really focused on the inside of the arenas and also during game time. So during the game time, the game or the match, it's working great. But as soon as uh, that match ends, they flip the switch and turn it right off. So you, that it, then you have that more authentic experience, I guess, of what it is like normally. Oh, interesting. What what would you say people don't realize about congested areas? They can happen anywhere. And it really depends, to your point, as we were just discussing, it depends on where that bottleneck is. Because there's times where it could be the infrastructure that they have to the, t to the tower site, to that receive site. There could be a limitation there. There's also been network outages, as we've experienced here recently in Canada with a certain provider. With that being said, there's loss of the connectivity to that receive site, so therefore they may flip to a backup of satellite. The satellite doesn't have the throughput that, in most of these use cases, have the throughput that they would have normally from a fiber connection. So therefore, everyone sees this great bandwidth and all of a sudden it gets shrunk really small into a small data pipe. So therefore, you're going to see that. So there's other aspects that can be involved in this, especially in a disaster scenario too. So you have you know, hurricanes in the United States, we have all these different things, natural disasters all over the world. So those also have an impact on it. In scenarios where there are natural disasters and network connections are deeply affected, have you seen success navigating through those types of challenges? Oh, well, absolutely. That goes back to what we've been discussing here is the RF performance and our smart blending technology. We The best thing that I hear from customers, and that's really where it comes from, is customers tell us all the time, we get out when others don't. And that is one of the best compliments you can get, especially in those scenarios, and that first responders, government officials, and broadcasters constantly rely on us to be able to get out in those difficult situations, and they keep coming back. For you to be able to see you know, different customers and organizations you know, broadcast their content, what do you find most joy? I mean, what is the reward for you? Probably the most rewarding thing is just, you know, watching them be successful and making sure that they're going live and that they, you know, almost getting no phone calls almost in that sense, you know, that's always the thing is just making sure that they, they're they happy. And then also the great thing that I've heard from a lot of our customers is that they actually end up becoming advertisements for us and telling other stations or other uh, customer, possible customers in the area. We do, we get a lot of word of mouth recommendations, which is becoming more and more common for us, which is really good to see. And it shows that we're doing something really Good, that a lot of other folks aren't doing as well. Thanks so much. Thank you. To learn more about DeGiro's suite of products, head to DeGiro.com.